Hey guys, it's James here from Me Bass Guitar, and in today's bass guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play five legendary Blues Brothers bass riffs as played by the equally legendary Donald Duck Dunn. If that sounds good, make sure you check out this lesson all the way to the end. <laughs> Hey guys, it's James here from ebassguitar.com. Today I'm going to be showing you five legendary Blues Brothers bass riffs as played by the incredible Donald Duck Dunn. So this is YouTube lesson number 135 on the eBass Guitar YouTube channel. So if you're watching this lesson and you enjoy the lesson, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hitting the red button somewhere around the screen because we release a lesson just like this every single week. Still to this day, I'm an absolutely massive fan of the movie The Blues Brothers, but when I was wearing out the VHS when I was 11 or 12 years old, little did I know who the bass player in the band backing The Blues Brothers really was. It was the incredible Donald Duck Dunn on bass, who was the house player spare for Stax Records in the 1960s. He literally played on hundreds and hundreds of massive, massive soul hits. So today, I want to take apart five bass lines as played by Donald Duck Dunn on the Blues Brothers record. So what we're covering today is literally just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Donald Duck Dunn and the Blues Brothers bass lines. So I'd love it if you could tell me what your favourite bass lines are by the Blues Brothers or Donald Duck Dunn in the comments below. But now let's give you a taster of what we're going to be covering this lesson. So guys, just before we hit the lesson content today, I want you to know there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson, so you can see all of the riffs we're discussing today written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below where you can grab your free copy. So the first riff we're going to look at today is the riff from I Can't Turn You Loose. This was originally by Otis Redding in 1965, but there's an incredible version of the Blues Brothers playing this on Saturday Night Live. So let's hear what the riff sounds like. So this is a one bar riff in the key of C. So let's take apart the first four notes. So the first four notes are a C, an A, a G, and a C. So how I would finger that is I would bar the C, and then I would play the A, and then I would go down to the G, still with that bar, so we can rock back and forth like that, and then I would go back to the C. This is by far the easiest way of playing it. It might get, take a little time to get that rocking back and forth going, or barring, but it's well worth persevering. So the first four notes are this. And then on beat three and, we go to an A, and then on beat four, we go to a G, and then on beat four and, we go to an A again. So the last three notes are this. Three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Three. So to put the whole riff together, it sounds like this. And try and play the notes as long as possible. So let's hear what this sounds like with the drum track. So the next riff we're going to look at is the riff to Soul Man. This was originally by Sam and Dave in 1967. So it is a one bar riff in the key of E which sounds like this. So let's take that apart a beat at a time. So the first two notes are two E's and then we go to a C sharp at fret 4 on the A string so we end up with this. So try that first of all, then just after the second beat we play a C sharp and then directly in the middle of the second beat, so beat two and we play a B at the second fret on the A string. So to put the first two beats together it sounds like this, to slow it down, speed it up, then the last two beats are just two A's a B and a C sharp, which takes us back round to the E. So. Mm -hmm. 
So let's play this with a drum track so you can hear what it sounds like in context. So the next riff is the riff to Gimme Some Loving. Now this was originally by the Spencer Davis group in 1966, but the Blues Brothers really did turbocharge it with their version. There are two parts to this riff. Let's start off with the classic opening riff, which I'm sure you know, which sounds like this. This is in the key of E, and it's prime example of how great riffs do not have to be complicated. So it starts off with five E's at fret seven on the A string, which sounds like this. Like that, which takes us up to beat three of the bar. And then on the fourth beat of the bar, we hit a low open E like this, which is big, fat, and powerful. So first of all, let's practice that riff. Then, on the second verse, they introduce this secondary riff, which is absolutely fantastic. It's one of my all-time favorite riffs, actually. It's a two-bar riff and sounds like this. So let's take apart the first bar. So we are gonna introduce a D into the riff at the first fret. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rock back and forth between the E and the D like this. So we're gonna go E, D, E, D, E like that, and then drop down the octave like that. So that's the first bar. So we're gonna... So just practice that to begin with. And then let's put in the second bar. And so the first five notes are exactly the same. And then on beat three and of the bar, it drops down to a C sharp and then comes up chromatically. So we do C sharp, D natural, D sharp and E like that. My preferred way of fingering that is to drop down to a first finger and then do first finger like that and then two and then four. So the second bar sounds like this. Play that again. So let's put the first two bars of that riff together. So that's, sound, that's what it sounds like. Let's try it with the drum track so you can hear it in context. Guys, if you're enjoying this lesson, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Basslab Plus. The Basslab Plus is a step-by-step -step program designed especially for beginner to intermediate bass guitar players. It will teach you all of the most important skills you need to play great bass lines to Blues Brothers songs just like this, but also it will teach you everything from playing your very first notes through to constructing bass riffs, through to playing walking bass lines all over the fingerboard. So if you want to check out the Basslab Plus, make sure you click the link in the description below where you can join free with a 14 day trial. So the next riff we're going to look at is the riff to shake a tail feather. This was originally by the five duo tones in 1963 but the Blues Brothers collaborated with the incredible Ray Charles and came up with this version. This is a fantastic bass line if you're looking to push your finger speed forward and your technique. So you could think of it as a one bar bass line but I like to think of it as a two bar bass line or two bar riff which alternates between the chords of D and G. So let's hear what it sounds like. So let's take apart the first bar of the riff over the D chord. This uses the major pentatonic forward position. So let's look at the first four notes to begin with. So it starts off with two Ds at the fifth fret. Then we go to an F sharp at the ninth fret and then an A at the seventh fret on the D string. So let's practice that. Then the next note is a B, A, like that, so that's. And then the last two notes of that bar are an F sharp and an A, like that. So let's play that first bar to begin with. Just do it really 
slowly to begin with and then slowly ramp up the tempo. So once you're comfortable with that first bar, to put it into G, all we need to do is take that shape down one string and play this. But there's one note that changes, which is the last note. And what they do is they end on an A. So we end up with this pattern. Like that. So one slight tweak between the two shapes between both chords there. So let me play the D chord and then the G chord. So what I suggest to do is work up very slowly, it's one five BPM at a time, something like that. But the biggest tip I can give you is to play lightly and do not play too hard because you'll start to wear yourself out if you're playing too aggressively. So just relax a little bit and then you'll be able to build up the tempo to play this riff. So the last riff we're gonna look at today is the riff to She Caught the Katie. This was originally a Taj Mahal song in 1968, but the Blues Brothers version of this is my all time favorite piece of duck down bass playing. And it's got a bass line which sounds like this. So what I suggest you do, you could look at this as a single one bar riff, but I think it's much cooler if we actually build it out into a four bar bass line. So let's look at that first bar to begin with. So this is the first two beats. So what we're doing is we're starting off by playing two B flats, and then we are sliding, and this slide is super important into a G on the D string, and then going back to an F, so do this. Then the next beat after that is two B flat 16th notes and hitting a G eighth note. So we end up with this. And the G is at the third fret on the E string. And then the last beat of that riff is an F and a G. So I play the last two beats in isolation, which sounds like this. So let's put the whole of that bar together. So you could look at that as being your core bass riff, but let's extend it into a four bar bass line. So the next thing that happens in the song is we play an F chord. So we're just gonna take that exact pattern and put it into F. So the F is at the third fret on the D string. So just take those same notes again. So what we're doing is we're sliding into a D, C, and then back to the F. So the D, C, there. So for, then just put those two lines, two bars together. So you could create a bass line just like that. But the third and fourth bar, what you could play is this, which is heavily related to what we just played, is the first two beats with the, just this, B flat. So do try that, two B flats, a G and F. And then two 16th notes, hitting the G on the end. And then the F, G like that. Don't forget, this is all written out in the free PDF, which comes with this listen. Link in the description below. So let's put the whole four bar bass line together. So pretty cool, eh? So this is an absolutely fantastic Donald Duck bass line to get down, or Donald Duck done bass line to get under your fingers. So let's hear what this sounds like with the drum track. So 
guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed the lesson, make sure you download the free PDF so you can see all of the riffs we've discussed today written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below where you can grab your free copy. Also, if you're looking to push your bass guitar playing forward, make sure you join the Bass Lab Plus over at ebassguitar.com. Bass Lab Plus is a step-by-step -step program designed especially for beginner to intermediate bass guitar players. They'll give you all of the most important skills to play the jam session, join the worship team, join a covers band, or just simply rock out to your favorite tracks at home on YouTube. There's a link in the description below where you can join free with a 14-day trial. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com. I'll catch you next time.